And to continue our funeral coverage, joining us from London to talk about today's events and what's ahead is Royals Insider and UK-based journalist Thomas Mace Archer Mills. Good morning. Yes, good morning, New York. How are you today? Doing, doing well. Thank you for being here on such an important day, right? And there have been such several days of ceremonies, right? But today was the grandest affair that we witnessed play out live on our, our channel this morning. Is it what you would expect, though, for a queen who has reigned for this amount of time? What do you think of today's services? It was completely appropriate. History in the making. It is what Her Late Majesty did want. Uh, what we saw today was decades in planning. Precision carried out that the only way the British can and could do, and I do think Her Late Majesty would have been very happy uh, watching what we observed today. Uh, very emotional today, as been the last 11 days. But when we see the continuity, we see everyone gathered. It really speaks for itself. It's it's not about being grand. It's not about what expense is spared here. It's about giving thanksgiving for a life of service, 70 years of service to not only the United Kingdom, but the 15 other nations of which Her Late Majesty was head of state and the 56 Commonwealth nations of which she has served. Yeah. So it is quite, quite a remarkable day that we've seen today. And it's everything that she had signed off on, uh, the plans here. One of the things I did notice, uh, the wreath that was on her coffin, there was a tiny little note, and what we're learning was a small note from King Charles III that said, in loving and devoted memory, Charles R, R standing for Rex, which is Latin for King. That was one of the most poignant things that I noticed. But what were some of the most meaningful moments that stood yeah. out to you? Well, you, you talk about that wreath, and what it was made of was so symbolic, and especially coming from the royal estate, Buckingham Palace Gardens, but also the king's uh, High Grove estate and uh, his, his London home, Clarence House. So the, the most poignant things that have stood out today are the people, the number, the volume of people, 50 deep in some areas. The military precision also something else. But what was the most poignant was the walking of the royal family after the Queen's gun carriage. It's moving, it touches everybody, but it also gives us insight as to how dutiful and devoted the family is, not just to a monarch, but to their matriarch who they've mm -hmm. lost. And when we look at Princess Anne, the Princess Royal, and how she has been with her mother since the loss, she escorted her from Balmoral to Edinburgh. And now we see her taking her from London to Windsor, bringing her mother home. And that is very poignant. Yeah. Because when we look, it's very male dominated. Uh, the line. And when we look at the place of Princess Anne, not only in succession, but what her title as Princess Royal means, she has done her duty and carried out mm -hmm. everything that's been expected of her by her late mother. Yeah. So I think the star of the day is Princess Anne, the Princess yeah. Royal. Excellent point. Excellent point all around. And you're talking about that poignant moment for you, which was watching them march behind. And I think it's the first time that you saw some of the emotions on their faces. You could see it in King Charles III's face, right? The family obviously in mourning, but there's also this sense of duty, right? Greeting mourners, as we saw in some of the video, hosting dign dignitaries, interacting with yeah. the public each and every step of the way, all, of course, while grieving. And, and there is such much to yeah. be said about the popularity of King George III going into all of this. Would you say the royal family has really risen to the occasion? Of course they have. It's all about duty. It's all about putting the nation first. And this is what we've seen the last 11 days. The king undertook a tour of the four nations of the kingdom before even lying his mother to rest. That shows his dedication and service to the people of the United Kingdom. And the family coming together the way they have, it's first and foremost a family occasion. It's just that their mother and grandmother happened to be head of state, mm -hmm. the queen of the United Kingdom. So we can't forget that this is a very emotional moment for a small family. And as any family would want to mourn, we would like to do it privately, mm. but this family can't. They have to be seen. 
they are the representatives of several countries. So what we're afforded as private people, this family is not, and they have more than risen to the occasion. Yeah. Thomas, thank you so much for your insight and sharing that with us this morning. We appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. Have oh, a good day. You too. You too.